Listen. Hello and welcome to NBC, IGN's Nintendo podcast. I'm your host, Casey DeVritis, and today we will be ranking the Nintendo consoles. All what? of them. Hopefully, impossible. maybe we will get a top five. I know it's kind of impossible, but we have to do it because for NBC 500 Live, we don't have time to pick the best game for every single Nintendo console. I'm so this is part one of, of part one. 500 Live. It is part one of 500 Live. Okay, let's we go. We are approaching. And I'm joined today by Brian Altano. Hello. Zach Ryan. GBA for Prez. And... Pear Snyder. Hello. We're doing it. Okay. Do you guys want to get started? Yeah. We're jump right just go okay. right into okay. it. Yeah, jump into it. it. Well, Don't you I ever guess... want to ask like how we're doing? No. Because it's all going to, we're going to start fighting with each other. Let's get the formalities oh, out of the okay. way. Okay. I guess I do have some housekeeping. Justin Davis did tell us that NBC shirts are the second most sold IGN shirt on our store, oh. which is pretty cool. GameStop is beating that us. Store. Uh -huh. yeah, it's, it's our fault. It, yeah. it is. If but you're um, out there and you're listening to NBC, go buy an NBC shirt because we got to beat GameScoop. <laughs> yeah. Damon is so smug about the GameScoop shirts. <laughs> this feels and all And they don't like, even have like a nice slogan. We have the I, nice welcome I wanna, shirts. I want to be clear. Cool. There's not some like company edict to make everybody talk about t-shirts. Yes, this there is. There is. Really, it is really a war. Have I asked you to to try and sell shirts on NBC? No, not no. in the manner of speaking. No. You do that Pear Schneider thing, where oh, you're like, like with a wink, where or you're something? like, no. Pear likes to do a thing where he goes, you know, what would be cool is if maybe somebody mentioned this on a podcast, and what that actually means is do, do this. It. Yeah, yeah. Did I do, you know, do that? Oh yeah. Do you guys know? I what totally we can do? didn't do that. I know what we can do to tip what? over the scales here. Okay. Welcome, Matt. Yeah, oh, that's wow. sick. Yeah, and it's that. just got like sixty O's on it. Okay, it's just the welcome funny. theme from the shirt yeah. is on just your floor, on the yeah. floor, okay. on the like porch. It. Step on it. I like it's it. Go in. Welcome right. people to your home. Right. Go well. Look for that next anyway. on the IGN store. I don't think that's gonna happen, but you can use the code <laughs> NBC10. I don't know. All beyond is case. getting Beyond is getting an uh, elderly Irish woman shirt. So Wait, anything are they is, seriously doing yeah, that? Yeah, anything is possible. Yeah, yeah. anything is possible. All right, what do we need? We need get the thing welcome. Well, I think we have a get the thing shirt and a welcome shirt. Okay, good. Yeah. A bow tie? Yeah, just a bow tie with NBC. <laughs> and, it just says, and it just says, lovely in cursive. <laughs> Delightful. Yeah. yeah. Charming. Like that. Charming. We'll get it. We'll get a Tom meme shirt going. Oh, man. Um, Actually, good. a t-shirt with a bow tie yeah. on it. Yo, that if we're going to make a Tom shirt, you know what I want? I want like a black shirt or a white shirt that in the square is just that photo of Tom from the beach looking terrified <laughs> yeah. with no further explanation. I want that to be like the cover of a hip hop record. I, I love that image so I, much. I feel like Cole Duncan Kong is listening to this. So, yeah. yeah. He's, he's out there. Yeah. Yeah. Doing it. Maybe. NTC, well, yeah. Nintendo t-shirt chat. Gosh. Mm -hmm. So let's start ranking every Nintendo console. And I also want to, we should figure out, is the Nintendo Switch in the top five? Yes. We will learn. Yeah, I think we can all agree, right? So yeah. we can just highlight. Okay, hold, hold, hold. Can, can we, let's, let's do back some, up. Let's do some criteria first. Okay. Right? Um, first of all, are we counting backwards compatibility, virtual console, et cetera, because then you can say like, okay, the GameCube is one of the best consoles of all time. The Wii can play every GameCube game. The Wii then inhales the entire GameCube library I, I and then defeats it. Hmm. As a criteria point, I would like to put out that we only count the games that were released natively for the platform. I love that. Yeah. How do you feel so about it that? is about that, software, like in, hardware, everything. Because in that case, it would be like the Wii U would be the number one because it had... 64 games and DS yep. games and GBA yep. games, you know, so like there's I think and I don't think there's any universe where the Wii, Wii U is bad. No, yeah. I was just kidding. Everybody no, likes but it. No, Zach's right. Like the Wii U could be the number one system of all time because it technically has the largest library of backwards compatible games. I, I think we're looking for like functionality, cultural impact, uh, legacy and software, right? Yes. Okay, so the okay. Wii U loses a lot of those categories. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so here's one of the things that I was having trouble with. So the Game Boy or the Game Boy Color. Mm -hmm. But the Game Boy... I, I, no, I the GBA. Think those are, I think those are... Or the, yeah, but yeah. the Game Boy Advance can play Game Boy Color games. Yeah. Right. But the Game Boy Color and the Game Boy are essentially, we can count that as one, right? Mm, I think so. a lot of people lump those into the same category when they talk about Game Boy, Game Boy Color just, games. Well, just here we go. I would argue that the Game Boy had a larger cultural impact. How about Game Boy slash Game Boy Color? Can't play Link's Awakening DX on a Game Boy. So, okay. Mm -hmm. I, I don't but, know if I want to participate in this. Yeah. You're, you have to. You're too hard. hard. No, it sounds it is too hard. hard. Okay, we have to just pick five. Okay, hold on. I'm, I'm not ranked. 
I'm probably like the biggest Game Boy, Game Boy Color fan at the company. I'm completely okay with us jamming those things together, but I don't think it would work for something like the DS and the 3DS. No, it wouldn't. So no, keep those lines yeah. separate. Yeah. But you can take all the all the weird 3DSs and 2DSs and XLs and right. my, all that. Right. Match those umbrella. together. Yeah. And the GBA is on its own, right? Yes. yes. And the Virtual Boy doesn't exist. Yeah, but it's we not have on our to list. count the SP as a completely no. different situation <laughs> because it was a clamshell shape and not a rectangle shape. We can, yep. I think we Major can agree discrepancy. That was the best renditioned of the Game Boy Advance. Yeah, but it really was. No. <laughs> so so here's no. what we have on the list right now. We got okay. the Switch, the 3DS, the Wii U, the Wii, the DS, the GameCube, the Game Boy Advance, the Game Boy slash Game Boy Color, the Nintendo 64, the Super Nintendo, and the Nintendo Entertainment System. Okay. Yeah. So this is super easy. If so you guys just listen to me. Switch makes okay. the list. Well, yeah, Switch is on the list because mm -hmm. it's awesome. Uh, the Super NES is the best console ever made. Mm -hmm. Needs to be on this. No, that, that's not. It's not an opinion. That's a fact, right? Okay, pair. Yeah. Let us know in the comments. Um, Super NES definitely has to be on there. It does. N64 defined three D gaming for the world to come has to be on yeah. the list. Okay. Seth Macy, we have a you know we have a Slack channel where we're talking about like what the run of show looks like week over week, and we were talking about this today, and he was like, oh, well, the N64 doesn't have a spot on the list, but it's like. Mario 64 and Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time completely redefined what 3D gaming are in those games came out on the Nintendo 64, so I don't know why how you couldn't put it. Yeah, uh, well, but also, has to be on also Quest 64 came out on the 64, and that's a bad game. Yeah, I mean... I mean, the, every system has bad games. <laughs> well, it's Not like, the Nintendo Switch. <laughs> for only good oh. games. Yeah, no, you're totally right. For, for I, I would say that for what the N64 did for Mario and Zelda, it didn't do for Donkey Kong. Mm. Do you know no one's ever finished that game? Donkey Kong 64? <laughs> That's yeah. not true. I it's finished it. I finished I it. didn't collect every freaking color banana. Yeah, that and you didn't finish it, did no, you? No, that's not the same. Either. Those that were a suggestion. That game ends in a boxing ring. Did you know that? Yes. Yeah. No. Uh, we're all over the place here. Uh, so you were saying you have a I was suggestion. Saying, like, hey, console wise. Your rings are going really well. Congratulations on that, by the My way. My watch? Yeah. It's uh, really closing them up out there, you guys. Yeah, thank you. Uh, um, so, yeah, Switch for me. Switch Super NES and N64. Remember, I'm not like an NES guy Switch, because I didn't, I, didn't play, I didn't play console games during that age. Wait, was, so you said Switch NES and Nintendo No, I said Switch Super NES and oh, N64 NES, okay. from the console front. I absolutely love the GBA. I feel like the GBA was this major step forward, not kind of hardware power-wise, but just like versatility-wise, because you could actually see the games you were playing on it. Sorry, GBC and mm -hmm. GB. Oh, really? Did you play Circle of the Moon when it launched? And it, it had, and it had awesome, awesome games. It did. Mm -hmm. Yeah? yeah. I don't, I, I so wait, that was only four? Well, I, I don't want to like usurp Switch. the whole thing. No. GBA, we we SNES. we as an idiot console and I don't want it on the list. Sorry, but like I, we, I think the Wii was just fine. It, it was, was iconic and it was it, mega popular, obviously, and there uh, are good games on it. Great, yeah. Two of the best Mario games of all yeah, time. Seriously. Uh yeah. uh two like pretty mediocre in my book Zelda games. Um What? I don't. I don't think Twilight Princess and Sky. I've said this a million times. Wow, that's yeah. like a I Seth Macy opinion. Those, I think both of those games are fine. I'm no, you got to replay Twilight Princess. Yeah, I, I did when Twilight it came to Princess Wii U, and it is boring. Oh my god. Anyway, it takes a while to get where it needs to get, and then it gets going. The it does have the greatest Zelda so, symbol of all. So time, then, the dual hook. I absolutely love that the GameCube, but I also feel like it kind of it it was the most same as the other consoles out on the market at the same time. It does have my favorite game of all time on it. Which is what? Wind Waker. Wind Waker. Wind Waker is also on the Wii U, so you got to pick that one, too. No, we, <laughs> no. I, I'm just saying. No. Um, I love the GameCube, but if you want to make room for handheld consoles, the 3DS was pretty good, and the DS was pretty good. I think my deal with the GameCube is, like, there's a lot of great Nintendo games on the GameCube, but I have a lot of... Mem like, when the GameCube was out, it was my... Almost my primary system because I played a lot of PlayStation exclusives and I played a lot of third party stuff on the GameCube. So I associate a lot of things like Prince of Persia, Sands of Time, okay. Beyond Good yeah. and Evil. I associate Time with splitters. the GameCube. Yeah. As opposed to like Resident Xbox Evil 4, or obviously. Yeah. I think the N64 is an incredibly important system and I think it has some of the most uh, sort of influential video games of all time. Um, Mario 64, I don't think, has been usurped in terms of like. Just a, a revolutionary launch game like Breath of the Wild comes pretty close, mm -hmm. um, but I think the library starts to collapse after you get like five or ten games deep. 
honestly. Like the N64 got pretty weak third party support. Yeah. Um, it has. Oh, it definitely wasn't a third party it console, had, but yeah. it yeah. gave us snowboarding the way snowboarding <gasps> should be. Oh, done. you're talking about That's snowboard true. kids? It did have Goldeneye. Yeah, that one too. Um, it had, I mean, that was sort of <laughs> the. I would say that that was kind of the peak of rare, right? Like, yeah. so that was. Let's not forget of, about Kirby and the Crystal Shards. No, oh, Kirby Kirby's Air, Air Ride. Ride. Kirby's yeah. Air Ride on Sunday. No, we, no, we should Keep forget Keep. about that. But Banjo yeah, Kazooie was amazing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. There there are games from Rare and from Nintendo EA, EAD that are just perfect dark. They define Goldeneye. genres. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think it, it honestly guys, gets hard. like ten or twelve games in and then it kind of falls apart. So I'd be okay yeah, with that. Yeah, but that's the thing about I think that's the point that Pear is trying to make is that there are ten or twelve games on that system that redefine what gaming was. Like Perfect Dark Prove that you could do. There would be no Halo if there wasn't. Per, uh, I'm sorry, I said Perfect Dark and I meant Goldeneye. Right. There'd be no Halo if there wasn't Goldeneye. Mm -hmm. There'd be right. no Bioshock or Overwatch if there wasn't uh, Goldeneye because that showed that you could do a first-person shooter competently on a on a console mm -hmm. system. Um, also, Odd Job is there and he's bad, so <laughs> people learned a lot from that as so well. We did. We learned about balance issues. Here's my argument right. for the Nintendo 64. I want to hear an argument between which is the better game, Ocarina of Time or Mario 64. But well, shouldn't we save that for the 500? Yeah. No, that's yeah. what but she's I, saying. I, she wants oh, it on the list. I got it. Argument. I got it. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. so you want it on the list. 64 on the yeah. List. yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> fair. 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 All right. So I, I think, so we've got, according I'm to Pear, a list here, yeah. Switch, uh, GBA, SNES, and what was the last one you said? Nintendo 64. Yeah. 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 And so the fifth slot, the fifth slot, I would make a case for... By the for, way, you guys don't have to listen mm -hmm. to me. I'm no, just, no, yeah. uh, I'm just... Fifth slot, I would make a case for the the DS. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, an incredible library, a completely, like, bonkers way of thinking about design. You know, yeah. like, I, I think that when everybody saw that dual screen layout, it was like, well, I mean, Nintendo did it a hundred years before, but... Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, the idea that you would have multiple play fields and, and uh, which is what that meant for design and on a handheld system, especially um, major deal. I, I, you can't deny the library of games on yeah. that. Like it is an insane library of games. And they did a really cool thing with the dual screen setup. They were tr they were getting around one of the issues with touchscreen gaming, which is if you tap at something, you lose track of it. Right, like you are by using your finger on an iPhone game, the game has to be designed with the fact in mind that your hand is in front of the screen. So you know they get they have to be really careful with how, where they place menu items. And the the D, the DS solved for a bunch of stuff like that by using a stylus, by also having you know the dual screen where like the visuals you needed to see at all times were at the top a lot of times. Like it, it was just a smart system, even if you know design wise, like having two differently sized screens was all sorts of wonky right mm -hmm. if you think about that it it still had to kind of figure out how to keep the game boy generation in play by having the resolution and the screen up top and all of that yeah there was also a lot of kind of like mind the gap with how they worked with that you know inch mm -hmm. plastic uh, barrier between like there were some games that did that really well and there were others like the yoshi <laughs> island one where you <laughs> did just, it very poorly you just yeah. jump up yeah. and be like where where'd he go right. um it, and it started with an ugly system. The original yes. DS is incredibly yeah. ugly. Oh, with the, uh, the, 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 the layer. It, it's yeah. got yeah. like, it looks like something from another century with more bevels than like a, a, a like a classicist column or something. Whereas like like, I haven't held an original DS in years. There's one in the, uh, so the uh, console case, yeah, yeah, the display case. They're much heavier than you remember. It also shipped with that thumb strap that we all thought we'd be using all the time. That but was the bad. DSi and the DS Lite are two of the most beautiful systems mm -hmm. ever made. Yeah. So like, it, yeah, no, it got better. I, ju Where's I the just launched? bought a DS Lite. Like, really? Like two months ago because I wanted to buy a bunch of GBA games yep. and uh, the DS Lite is the most affordable and one of the best ways to play GBA yep. games. And that system is incredible. Yeah, I'm like, rules. I'm in the minority in, in saying that the Game Boy Micro was Nintendo's prettiest handheld. Some of the, I wish they weren't so expensive. Oh, they are. They're I so the, expensive now. You know, I would love to buy one. I have the they're, earthbound they're, one. It's just the dude, coolest. Looking I have the system Famicom ever. one. The coolest guy I know. Oh, so Which is like, good. yeah, oh, I'm so proud uh, of that one. The, um, but the, but the software of that system and the uniqueness of the DS kind of makes it, a great choice. I agree, and it it got amazing RPG, JRPG support. It had tremendous third party support in general. Remember um, when they put Chrono Trigger on it? That was cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah they put a lot. There's like a ton of That's right. So a ton of games we forgot 
ended up there. Like, that's an interesting case, though. Like, do we count that stuff? Uh, you know, we kind of set out to have this discussion and said that like, we're only counting stuff that was released natively for the platform. But, like... Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy 3, 4, etc. got carts and specific versions made for mm -hmm. the the DS. So does that do we count those towards the overall like library or is that more port uh, backwards think, compatibility kind of stuff? I don't think we would include those as ranking the games for that system, but I think an overall library it should be included. Okay. Uh, so, like, the, so now the, the one system, obviously, like I, I feel like everybody is fair, yeah. is cool with leaving out Wii U, GameCube, you know, mm -hmm. GBC. They're all great systems, but I, oh. NES. None of you guys are championing that. No. Oh, so I, I mean, I, I absolutely will. Like, yeah. I, I mean, that is that's 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 a system that invented console gaming as we know it. Right. It created some of the most iconic characters ever made it had an incredible library a great third-party support got tons of arcade ports um rescued the video mm -hmm. game industry single-handedly like there's a lot to be said for the nes I, in, I, in many I think, ways over some of the others i think that the only thing that that my only issue with the nes versus putting the snes on the list is like a lot of the stuff that nintendo specifically was doing on the nes they did the same and better on the SNES. Mm -hmm. Like I think Link to the Past and Super Mario World are plussed up versions of the original Zelda and Super Mario Brothers three in a way that is like, oh, that this is the beginning of Nintendo's like iterative, iterative philosophy in a way that is like so obvious and so much like like so beautiful and so wonderful yeah, on sure. the Super Nintendo. Yeah. Super Metroid too. Oh I mean, yeah, Super like, Metroid too. Throw that one in yeah. there. Um, the thing about the DS is weird if you're looking at it just from the perspective of like iconic like characters like Mario and Zelda, right. is that like the Mario and Zelda games on the DS weren't really that great. New mm -hmm. Super Mario Brothers on the DS is like a top tier Mario Brothers game. It's the good. The first one. It's very good. One. And yeah. I think it's like, it, it definitely revitalized that franchise to a place it needed it to be while kind of sticking to the roots a little bit. Um, and I think it gets thrown under the bus when we think about how often they milk that art style afterwards. Um, and I love Spirit Tracks and Phantom Hourglass, but like, I... I don't think I'll ever play those games again. I try no. to replay them on Wii U. It, you got to admire Nintendo's ability to kind of create unique experiences on two systems that they were supporting at the same time. And so yeah. I, I think the DS kind of got robbed of a more traditional Zelda experience. Like having a game that you play with a stylus once, I thought was really cool. I'm like, this is cool, but combat doesn't feel as good as in the other one. Right. And so I was done with it after one game, but then you got another one, right? Yeah. Kind of stuck yeah. with that formula. But I, I hear you. Um, so I mean, DS was like a really good jack of all trades in terms of that kind of stuff. So, but. so right now we've got six favorite systems. If you guys yeah. are, are keeping are we, count without the GameCube, even in are we not going to talk about the Virtual Boy? We're not. Uh, we're, not we're probably no. not going to talk about it. <laughs> Nestor's Funky Bowling, Waterworld, those other games, Mario Tennis, Mario Clash, Clash, yeah. Wario no. Four. Well, if you're looking so, for five, we we got to cut one. So which one? Ooh, so I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna make things complicated. I, th I think I prefer the Game Boy over the Game Boy Advance. I do too. I do How too. dare! If like, you take Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and smash them together, uh, Game Boy Advance got no original Mario game. That's true. It got no original Zelda games. It, it got, got two Cap. original Metroid yeah, games. Yeah, it got Minish Cap. Oh, it got Minish Cap. You're right. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, it got two original Metroid games, which kick, which kick ass. Yeah. yeah, and Especially a lot of Castlevanias. And a lot a of Castlevanias. A bunch of Castlevania games. Really Castlevania. good Castlevania. A lot of great and it, RPGs. And it got a light. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of great <laughs> RPGs. A, a lot of really good RPGs. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ooh, this A lot of uh, Advance Wars. Ooh. Uh, great Fire Emblem games Fire on the Emblem. GBA. I guess mm -hmm. I, I'm looking at, at Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and they got like Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow. They got Link's Awakening. Yeah. Pokemon 94. Yeah. Ooh, Donkey Kong '94 is a good. They also got a. They also got well. a Donkey Kong Country game. Yeah, but uh, GBA like, had great uh, Metroid Pokemon 2. games too. Yeah. I bet, like percentage-wise, there are more games with dragons on the GBA than the GBA. That's true. All right, let's go with GBA. <laughs> the, the, well, that tears it. <laughs> the GB GBC actually got three exclusive Donkey Kong Country games in the Land series. Oh yeah, that's right. Are, Donkey Kong Country Land. Yeah, as they Donkey were called. Kong Land? <laughs> what am I thinking of with the yellow cartridge? You're thinking of Donkey Kong Country, which is a Super Nintendo. Okay. Game. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I think. Wait, did Donkey Kong Land? Have Donkey Kong Land were on green carts, weren't they? I believe so. Yeah. One of them was yeah. for sure, I yes. think. Okay. One of them was for sure, I think. So this is really hard. Terrible. So right Land, now we have the land. Switch, the <laughs> DS, land. the Nintendo 64, the SNES, and the GBA or the GBC. Well, we did a bad job of putting them down to five, didn't we? I mean, 
that's pretty good. I, I, mean, we I would vote low, so why don't we yeah. continue this discussion mm-hmm. and, and another uh, fight to the death. We no, create ourselves great. a little elimination poll between ourselves okay. and we vote on them. All right. Yeah. So we got it down to six. I think we did pretty well. Pretty good. Which eliminates, these are the games, these are the Nintendo systems not in our top five or six. The 3DS, the Wii U, the Wii, the GameCube, and the NES. And the Virtual Boy. Not, not in Thank there. Thank you. Not having the Thank NES is, b- is a bold move. Yeah, I, kn- I'm, I'm I not, know. Not one I agree with, with personally. Yeah. I'm I would sure swap the a NES lot of people. The NES. I think what we've discovered is that Nintendo has a lot of really good systems that a lot of people really love, and they're all wonderful in their own way. Yeah. Except true. the Virtual Boy. It's all about but what, what several of them the must most. be killed off. But yeah. several yes. of them must. But must only be five guess. can survive. Exactly. And only five can Even remain. the Wii U gave us some good times. I actually really enjoyed yeah, the Yeah, but all those good times are now coming to the Switch. So. <laughs> Not Nintendo Land. They That's should. That's true. They should do it. Yeah. It's just important to note that everyone is a winner, except five of them are, 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 are better. actual winners. <laughs> yes. And hopefully we did And the rest of, are dead to us. And the and virtual okay boy is just not. So also, just to, just to point out, usually we'd be doing this discussion in a room by ourselves for an hour and then... But I figured, why not make a show out of it? And yeah. speaking of that, we recently did the secret in a room discussion to figure out the top 25 Switch games, Mm -hmm. which we've updated for the first time for a while. Yeah, it's been over a year. Yes, and we have added Ring Fit Adventure, Link's Awakening, Astral Chain, Pokemon Sword and Shield, Super Mario Maker 2, Slay the Spire, Luigi's Mansion 3, Fire Emblem Three Houses, and removed Guacamelee 2, Puyo Puyo Tetris, New Super Mario Bros. U, Pokemon Let's Go, Yoshi's Craft and Roll. <laughs> I know. New I have Super really, Mario Bores. I have a typo. On the show. I also like Link's Awakening. Yeah, Link's Awakening. Uh-huh. Um, Yoshi's Crafted World, Fortnite, and Warframe. Um, uh- I uh, so I I wasn't in on this one, but um, I was surprised uh, none of the big kind of third party games that people love were in there. Like what? It's very uh, like your Witchers and all those. I suggested kind of that. We so down. okay, we had a hard time. We had an honorable yeah. mention list because that game is uh, freaking amazing, even if it so, isn't so, the best. So we, we had an honorable mention list that a lot of those types of okay, games gotcha. ended up on, where it was like. Yes, you can play them on the Switch, but they are better if you play them elsewhere. And that was like, okay. um, that was like, uh, Witcher three, the Witcher three, Doom, all uh, right. Overwatch, yeah. Overwatch, uh, Divinity uh, Original Sin two, yeah, DOS two, um, Resident Evil four, Minecraft, yeah. Fortnite, Fortnite, <laughs> yes, yeah, that was me last but night. But we kept Diablo, okay, but we because kept- the Diablo Switch version is excellent. It's definitive yeah. edition, and it's got yeah. Ganon armor. Yeah, which I mean, it has to be on the list. You can play you can with the Ganon, Ganon armor. Yeah. Um, okay, fair enough. I like I like the addition of Ring Fit Adventure. I think that game needs a little bit more of a spotlight on it. We talked about it a bunch, but it's one that I think is easily dismissed as some weird fitness mm-hmm. experiment. It's actually really, yeah. really fun. Yeah. I, my yeah. argument for it and for um, taking some of the other games off the list is that the Switch is a unique system and we should highlight the games that you can only get with the Switch. Okay. I think Ring Fit Adventure is one of those games. On top uh, of that, too, I think we talked about sort of like what kind of defines what this console is attempting to do Mm -hmm. um like what this is the library that defines like everything that's sort of interesting about these controllers and you know the sort of handheld console hybrid nature of it like ring fit is a is a is a a a thing that gamifies exercise by taking your joy cons and turning them into like pulse readers and like right yeah like it's it's just bizarre it's just so weird and interesting that it's like this is this kind of defines what what they're attempting to do here. Um, although the same could be said for Labo, but we didn't really put it in there because I don't really. Labo's like harder to pin down. That's so. It's yeah. a very niche product, right? And so if you pick the top twenty five things, you kind of want it to be enjoyable by most people too. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it's also like if you were making a list of like best toys to buy for Christmas, you'd have to pick like a Lego set, and yeah. that's kind of hard to pin down too. Yeah, that's I, like I think, Labo is well, it's sort of though. Yeah, best Lego set is the Saturn V rocket. Is it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, debatable. You heard it here. And I then think... the Millennium Falcon, if you're rich. <laughs> <laughs> I like the castle with the ghost. Castle with the ghost is good, but the, the Saturn the classic rocket. ghost. Yeah. I love that little guy. <laughs> um, Sorry, Casey. Casey's no, like, fine. what are you doing? I no. think the thing that the, my biggest takeaway from updating this list, which I was wrong, we updated it last May. That was the last time we updated it, so not over a year, just under a year. Um, but I think the thing that that 
surprised me was like uh, 2019 was such an excellent year for the Switch. Mm -hmm. um, all of the games that we added are killer games, and it pushed off things that I love, like Guacamelee yep. and uh, Yoshi's Crafted World. Um, so it's kind of surprising to me when we sat down and actually went over, you know, the games that should be added. It was like, oh yeah, this is a lot of great. Kind of cool. Like here, a new yeah. Pokemon game came out and pushed mm -hmm. another Pokemon game yeah. off the mm -hmm. list. Those like were already the two on the system in the first three yeah. years. Those were the more of the those were the easier uh, swaps because we just swapped out Let's Go and put in Sword mm -hmm. and Field and swapped out uh, New Super Mario Bros. U and put in Super Mario, Mario Maker, Maker Two. two. Yeah. Um, but a lot of them don't have those easy swaps to make. Yeah. yeah. So where, where did Luigi's Mansion rank? Wait, wait, uh, you guys uh, didn't. Ra uh, rank them right there's no they're, they're, they're well we did uh, do they have numbers they do have numbers they do have numbers okay, yeah good Luigi's i think that there was, was a time high. i think there was a time last year where we were experimenting with like the best switch games the best playstation games where it was where we didn't have numbers on the list yeah. it wasn't a numbered list but this year we've luigi's back mansion back. is number five and fire emblem three good. houses is number four that's pretty good i'm yeah. proud mm -hmm. of you guys yeah um what's I, it number three super mario odyssey okay yeah and then uh, Smash. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate and number one is Breath still Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I think that is a great top five. To which I have to say, happy anniversary, baby. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary, Breath of we the did, Wild. We did, yes. And we did talk quite, we accidentally talked quite a bit we about Breath of the do. Wild last last week. But Zach, yeah. I'm sorry. That's okay. What are your, what's your favorite Breath of the Wild memory? <laughs> uh, <laughs> my favorite Breath of the Wild memory. Um, so coincidentally, I, uh, I had the switch came out on the third, which was a Friday. Mm -hmm. um, that the following Monday, I had knee surgery. Oh, right. I had to have uh, like a That's pretty right. like a pretty intensive like surgery on my knee because I'm like a long time runner and I'm all banged up. Anyway, um, so I ha I was bedridden for two weeks, but it was like the perfect time to be bedridden because yeah. like I just got like. Real hopped up on pain uh, painkillers and then played Breath of the Wild for two weeks straight. And it was great because like I I was kind of useless as a video producer, but I wrote guides. Mm -hmm. I like was, it was on Slack like, talking to people like, hey, I found this thing. Go check this out. Like, it was the best time. Yeah, it was really cool I, I th because I wasn't in the office. He wasn't here and he was doing work. <laughs> yeah. It was great. It was unprecedented. He was so bored. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think my, f I think my favorite Zelda memory was of, like my breath of the wild memory was, uh, actually during link together mm -hmm. when, uh, Brian and I would try to solve any number of shrines and get like so frustrated with each other because like he would be controlling the jump or I would be controlling something else. And it was just like, we just, there were, there I were am the jump. Yeah. I am, yeah, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not the, the jump. I'm, I'm not the jump. Yeah. So like, <laughs> I think that the, the outtakes from that show are, must be so legendary because like those episodes were 20 minutes long, but we would record for like two hours plus. Mm -hmm. And like, there were moments where we legitimately had to like stop and be like, okay, we need to take a break because like yeah. we're actually mad at each other it, because we're th so bad. Thunder at Blight so, like, Ganon or Thunder Blight Ganon took us we, like multiple. Oh we had God. to shoot that three or four times yeah. before you, we could you do. You guys it. should do a montage for NVC 500. Yes, yeah, that'd be really good. Montage. I wonder if Mitchell still has that, still knows where that stuff yeah. is because that that raw footage must exist somewhere. Thunder Blight Ganon was like I think the angriest both of us ever got yeah. at work. <laughs> we weren't even <laughs> mad at each other. We're, I'm yeah. just mad at Thunder Blight Ganon. Yeah. Like honestly, like that's kept. Stuff like that has kept me from going back and 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 replaying that, and I I will, but like every I think about that character, and it's it's not that hard when it's, you fight it on your own. No. Yeah, but it's, it's just the, timing and the yeah. coordination. Yeah. But we beat that game and linked together. Yeah. Like that was each of us Crazy. holding a Joy-Con. I cannot believe that. Like that's insane. Yeah, that's up yeah. there with some of like the hard, like best video game achievements ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or some. people in real life, like people climbing mountains or going to space. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Guinness I would put it right up there. The second we yeah. rap yeah. and they're like, you want to get in the book. It's like Neil know? Armstrong and then like me and Brian yep. right, yeah. Up yeah. Yeah. right up there. Yeah, right up there. We should definitely do a montage. Mm -hmm. We should definitely do. I'll, I'll put that on my to-do list. I'll reach out to Mitchell. We'll definitely do. We definitely need to do another link together with Breath of the Wild 2. Mm -hmm. I'm putting that on your on your things to do list right now. I'm not your yeah. boss. Don't you can't listen. You don't listen to me. But I mean, I think people might want it. It happened. Yeah, it's there. We get okay. requests for it a lot, I feel like. Yeah. 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 But people Another didn't one. watch it watch enough of it, right? Like mm. the it didn't do amazing numbers. The first us, the it? first episode did like seventy thousand out of the gate, but like like a lot of our content that is uh like long tail content, mm. a lot of those episodes have hundreds of thousands of okay. views now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's worth it. Yeah. All right. I miss Mitchell's Let's Play. 
Me too. Yeah, I like very good at him. We miss you, Mitchell. Yeah. He didn't quit or yeah. anything. He just moved to LA. Yeah, he's not yeah. here anymore. So let's move on to some news. Including Luigi's Mansion 3 Multiplayer Pack Part 1 is out now. It includes three Madcap mini games, three new costumes in multiplayer mode, and themed ghosts. Mm-hmm. Don't okay. totally know what that means. But uh, <laughs> did you see that one of the costumes is Mamiji? Wait, what? Yeah, he's a mummy boy. Also, uh, one of the costumes is uh, I love it. One of the costumes is uh, I forget the Bobby G, where he just has like a giant pompadour. He's got like a big Elvis pomp. It's what? ridiculous. Yeah, it's so. Stupid. I did not see that one. Yeah. I saw Mamiji, but that sounds great. Yeah, it's very funny. He I'm has big it. hair. Very silly. But I guess if you are into playing the multiplayer mode of Luigi's Mansion Three, this might be for you. It's ten dollars, and you get this part one and also a part two coming out at the end of July. I never looked at any of the online multiplayer stuff for Luigi's Mansion, um, but I saw the trailer for this expansion today, and it's like full-on Mario Party-style minigames within Luigi's Mansion 3. Mm-hmm. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 Maybe I will check it out. I don't know. I, I never Are you still playing? I've, yeah. I've mostly yeah. done co-op. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. I just done co-op in the main story, but I never really checked out the multiplayer yeah. stuff, so maybe I will. Maybe this is to be said, like why they released DLC to make people play things that they haven't before. <laughs> no, um, definitely not talked about a lot. No, I don't hear it from our audience either. Mm-hmm. So let's take a look. Yeah. Also, uh, multiplayer is finally coming to Mario Kart Tour. That's it's crazy. coming out. That's on a March crazy 8th. choice for a Mario yeah. Kart game. I, think. I know. Who would have thought? Like being <laughs> yeah. able to race your friends. Like why would anyone ever want to do that? But uh, <laughs> you will be able to play with your friends with custom rules, and you'll be able to do standard 100 CC races online. There's a third multiplayer mode called Gold Races, but you can only play those if you have the Mario Kart Tour Gold Pass. And this ga- this features competitive races in the 150 and 200 CC categories. It's a weird launch. Yeah, it's very. Strange. I mean, there was a there was a multiplayer test already, so you know, if if you have this game installed, you probably already played multiplayer last month. But um, it's just a weird rollout for what is the multiplayer gaming franchise. Yeah, you know, very know. strange. I don't know. Maybe yeah. they just they had to troubleshoot things before they mm-hmm. could realistically get multiplayer to work. So yeah, why not do that before launching it? Yeah. Um, did you? Uh, are you going to go back to it now? No, you can play it? <laughs> I'm not. No? I could. I couldn't be less interested in this in this game. To I be played, honest, like, I played this game a lot. Yeah. when it came out. Um, but like ultimately, the loop didn't really grab me. Of yeah. just sort of like unlocking different colored versions of the same eight characters. Mm-hmm. I mean, having like I spent like 25 hours to get Mario. I was like, this is stupid. You played that game for 25 hours? Probably, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Woof. I, I can't. I can't say. It. I've played mobile games for 25 hours before. I can't say anything. No, no. no but, I, I'm f- yeah. in full support of playing mobile yeah. games for 25 mm-hmm. hours. I just this specific yeah. mobile game is. No. I was just like, I, I had the gold pass because they gave you the trial, and mm-hmm. I was riding the bus for you know an hour every yeah. day, yeah. and yeah. I was like that makes sure. standing there and. Yeah. So for me, sliding. it's like I, I might take later. another look, but for me, it's like. I got Apple Arcade on my iPhone, and so they're releasing games that are, you know, basically they're part of your subscription, so they're not monetized in any way mm-hmm. afterwards, right. and it's just really nice. So I get sucked into, like, when I'm on the go and I don't have my Switch handy, I'll play something like Cards of Darkness, or, like, I did Grind- Grindstone, Cards of Darkness, stuff. tell me more. Grindstone. Cards of Darkness is great. You haven't played it? No. Oh, my God. I haven't played any Apple okay, Arcade Okay, I'll show games. you later. It's, okay. Uh, you should play Grindstone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Rhinestone is also all great. Right, but Apple like, Arcade. But there, there are lots of cool little arcade games that come out all the time. And so, like, it, it takes a little bit more for me to go to a game like that that I've already left in the rearview mirror, mirror no pun intended. <laughs> um, thank you. It's fine. Thank so, you. hey, if you're interested in Mario Kart Tour multiplayer, you can play with your friends on March 8th. And if anybody, uh, any of our NVC fans are really into Tour, uh, make an argument for it. Why yeah. should we go back and, and, and play it? Apart from it having multiplayer. Yeah, I'd be interested in hearing reliably from that. Yep, yep. Also, um, Bloodstained is still getting updates. Um, I know it got uh, updated for Switch last October, um, but it's not getting its promised roguelike dungeon mode. So this was a $5 million stretch goal that it had that it reached in 2015, and that was to add a roguelike dungeon mode, which would basically just like a roguelike, randomly recreate all of the levels and you'd play through it again and have a seed to share it with people. Um, but the director, Koji Igarashi, said that a roguelike mode will not be possible as the code that was created early in the game's development is not currently compatible with this type of gameplay, especially a procedurally generated castle. So they're not getting rid of this totally. They're just replacing it with something else called randomizer mode, which is that before starting a game, players can choose up to eight different game parameters to be randomized through the playthrough. 
This is Kickstarter. A, no, like <laughs> I talked about this before. Mm-hmm. I kickstart a lot of projects. I'm a big fan of um, you know helping creative people achieve a vision. But there is it is different from buying a finished game, right? Mm-hmm. And there are sometimes things that happen in development where you know they put together these stretch goals, which are not rewards for the individual it's a reward for everybody coming together and maybe people telling their friends hey you should back this and you reach these goals and they unlock certain things for example there's a marvel tabletop game right now and like the the uh the stretch goals are new character and and models being added to the core package for free basically right so as an early backer you're getting the reward for more people piling on and getting free stuff in the final game just by virtue of them reaching a goal in this case so like Development progresses and they get to their point, get to a point where they go like, crap, we can't do right. this, right? And so what do you do then? I could imagine consumers being mad that they backed something, ponied up for something, thinking that they might get there. But at the end, that is that's the process of development. That's the process of Kickstarters. Nothing is guaranteed. And I feel like this game in the end still delivered on yeah. what it set no, out to do. Game. This this is a this is a thing that happens in the development of every video game ever mm-hmm. but with the Kickstarter model it just becomes much more transparent yep. and um I'm not crazy about it because I think that like the if there were people that funneled their money into this mode specifically because it sounds cool and then it disappears um that's not fair for them. You yeah. know, whereas like when I go buy a finished game, I don't know what was cut for the most part, unless mm-hmm. there was some like bogus E3 demo that showed me all the stuff that doesn't actually exist anymore. Um, and so that's kind of a bummer. Like I, I, I wish there was less of that sort of like promising the moon I, type. I just of thing. wonder like how many Koji Igarashi fans or Castlevania fans were coming to uh, Bloodstained for a randomized mode. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And honestly, like eight different variables to randomize throughout the course of your gameplay seems like a randomizer enough, you know, mm-hmm. with the exception of like, oh, it changes away around the way the map works. Like that is roguelike in enough in and of itself. Mm-hmm. In a way. So I, I don't know. I, I feel it, kind of conflicted about this on the one hand. Great. It's not great. It's not yeah. a great thing right. to do. Like they should have... They should have thought about this ahead of promising a stretch goal, but they might have also thought five million bucks will never get there, and that's why they didn't think. Yeah, and that's what I was gonna say. Is like on the one hand, I feel like if you make a promise to you know backers and say like, hey, we're gonna deliver this thing at X amount of money, you should follow through with it. But on the other hand, I think there are like nine people out there that are like, oh dang, my rogue like, you know. So I I don't know. No, I just really want. Symphony of the Night and all the GBA Castlevanias. Me too. Like this, this is not Symphony of the Night me. is now available as of this morning is now available on your cellular telephone device. So yeah. like why not put it on the I bought it on my iPhone this morning for two dollars and ninety nine cents. Like that's insane. Yeah. See that's one of the best games of all time for three smacks. I, yeah, right? I'm still I'm still hoping that you know, we've seen the we've seen the video game business develop the same way that like the movies industry has developed, where you know they're they're feuds and they're people who are becoming enemies and they're that's funny. They're Thank companies you. that you know fire someone or they break apart. And like I'm hoping we're seeing some of these reunion stories in the future too, where we get maybe Konami reuniting and creating a Castlevania with its original creator, or Mega Man, or Resident Evil, like the original creators Silent coming Man. back to these games. Um, Fire, you know, certainly Fire Emblem would be nice too, to get the original talent back for like another another title. Like I'm hoping we're, we're going to see more of that sort of Or stuff. give the IP to Way Forward or Yacht Club and yeah. let like the, the new class make something right. cool yeah. and, and interesting. We, we saw it with Yu Suzuki and Shenmue, for example. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like I would love to see you know, I would love to see another Metal Gear from the man who created the franchise, right? But Yeah, but does the man want to do that? The you man I mean? probably like, does, does not want does, to do is that. Is Kojima interested in making another Metal Gear? Is, uh, you know, whoever created Fire Emblem interested in making another but, Fire Emblem? But maybe game? Konami gets to a point where they feel like they can't run this franchise without getting fan backlash uh, backlash and negativity or not doing yeah. it justice and they're done making slot machines with with snake oh. <laughs> uh, yep so and so maybe they will sell the license and like maybe you know maybe it'll go to the original creator hmm. i think there needs to be sort of like a, a mario rabbits approach not necessarily making mm-hmm. it like a top-down game where simon belmont has a machine gun <laughs> But um, throwing it to a, a developer and letting them try something interesting and, and new, um, I, I like I, I don't know I I played Bloodstain I played Igarashi's new mm-hmm. take on Castlevania and it wasn't what I was looking for. It felt the music's crazy. It's exactly what I was looking really? for. Really, but to I me, that game. to me, like I 
I played it on. I want to hear the Castlevania music when I play something like that. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just, for me, like honestly, it was just kind of sluggish and muddy, and that's what kind of ruined it for me. But um, I I keep trying to go back to that game because I know I know that like, there's if I push through, it'll click. It's just not happening. So it's, it's I like well, it. We'll check back game. with Brian at a later date to see if Bloodstain ever clicked with him. Thank you. But uh, for now, just Mario Kart real Tour. quick, we did get a statement from the ESA that E3 is still happening. Um, everyone is watching the situation very closely. We will continue to be vigil vigilant as our first priority is the health, wellness, and safety of all of our exhibitors and attendees. Given what we know at this time, we are moving ahead full speed with E3 2020 planning. And this is in the wake of the news of coronavirus uh, and GDC being canceled and a bunch of other count conferences being canceled. Um, South by Southwest is still happening. E3 so far is still happening. Keeping our eyes on it. Yeah, there are a lot of look. Look, we we pulled out of South by Southwest. Um, you know, our team is not going, mm -hmm. and you know, as uh, our parent company, Ziff Davis slash J Two, actually usually has a big presence as South by Southwest through Mashable, and so we were going to do some joint stuff there. But you know, they expressed uh, worry about um, you know uh, safety and and too many people traveling, and so they restrict your travel for our company to the necessary stuff. Mm -hmm. um, South by Southwest is still happening. E3 is still happening. GDC got moved. Obviously, we don't know whether it's actually going to happen, yeah. but ostensibly it could be in the summer or the fall. Mm -hmm. um, but like nobody knows how this situation will develop. People are obviously worried, and it's better to err on the side of safety. And so, you know, as we get closer to E3, we'll see. Um, we'll we'll see where we are. Yep. Yeah. For now, June feels far away. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I yeah. like. Fly, you'd flying tens of thousands of people from all over the world into a single confined space and having them share video game controllers flies in the face of like everything we're being told to do with our hands right now. <laughs> um, so I could that see this sort of folding or cool. heading in a different direction. I think like the industry needs a sort of how does this how do we connect the dots from home sort of contingency plan here. Mm -hmm. um, and I hope those conversations mm -hmm. are happening on a bigger scale because. Yeah. But, there but it, are. There, I just want to say there are some airlines that for the next month, if you book travel, you can choose. They will waive any change fees for the next year. That's great. That's awesome. So. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this is a show that's already sort of struggling attendance wise, right? right? Nintendo's mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. which is great. I mean, Nintendo, for me, has been the best part of going to E3 pretty much since I started going to E3. And as all the others have pulled out, they've still managed to make this magical space. You know, they have this sprawling incredible booth usually themed around like one to four different big big games mm -hmm. and it's always so much fun to be there yeah and i love that part of it but if that has to go away for the well-being and safety of the people going there then maybe it should we'll yeah. probably know by april yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. depends on what the mm -hmm. uh, containment looks like i think mm -hmm. right. i think we'll yeah. still get a press conference from them either way right? oh yeah we just oh, won't yeah. be able to go oh, yeah. hands on with and that's, that's the conversation that we had on uh ign news live yesterday was like Nobody needs, not nobody, but like for the most part, Microsoft, PlayStation, Sony, uh, Sony, Nintendo, like they're still going to have these big press events. They're still going to have these big press conferences, regardless of whether or not they're tied to the ESA or yeah. E3, right? Like mm -hmm. they, they, they're still an important beat that they need to hit. And uh, for the last 25 years, that beat has come in June. And, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, I think people are expecting that. And regardless of whether or not people are in attendance at E3 this year, there will still be that that big press conference. So. Yeah. yeah. One of the things I said on Podcast Beyond, uh, which I'll repeat here real, real quick because I think it applies, is the, the thing about these trade shows uh, disappearing is that I, they are essentially disconnecting a bunch of indie devs with big companies like Nintendo who would have be ha ha been having behind closed doors meetings and figuring out ways to get their products on Switch. And right now, those aren't happening in the same sort of like natural way, mm -hmm. face to face. Um, and so hopefully, it, it seems people are willing to get their games on Switch for the most part, unless you work at an EA. Mm -hmm. And I think everyone fought, you know, <laughs> shots fired. Uh, Fots shired. Fots shired. Mm -hmm. But no, I, I like that's what bums me out, right? Like GDC going away means that people aren't there connecting with Nintendo mm -hmm. being like, how do we get our game on Switch this fall? Yeah, E3 I, going away, same deal. And so I think a lot of games aren't going to be where we want them to be when we want them to be, but we mm -hmm. won't even know that that's happening. It's, it's got an impact. Remember yeah. when when voice actors and writers striked, right? Like you, you like you can see the effects of a writer's strike in Hollywood. Right. Like suddenly TV shows were bad. Yeah. Right? Like Lost. for a couple of yeah, months I was going to say that, that abysmal. Right? Season of Lost, so, yeah. Yeah, there's this there's this kind of 
you know, the it's iceberg true. that you don't see underneath on the development side and also on the manufacturing side, stuff that doesn't get made right now in China, right. like it will have an impact later. I also oh, yeah. think the, the biggest impact for these trade shows going away are, my, are indie devs, not only yeah. because they're not having those conversations with the bigger publishers, but because the press won't cover their be games. able to see their games. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the things that I always enjoyed about E3 is going and discovering something I otherwise wouldn't have crossed my radar. Yeah. Yep. yeah, that's one of the best parts is like going mm -hmm. and having somebody like a Casey or like a Brian come and say like, hey, if you have 10 minutes, you can go check, please go check out this game that nobody's you know talking about. Really. Yep. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I remember my, it was like my first E3, there was a, a Batman game sitting next to a Scribblenauts game yeah. and they're both, you know, Scribblenauts is on a tiny little TV and Batman's next to a giant Batmobile and there's six demo kiosks for Batman and one for Scribblenauts. But Scribblenauts won game of the show for a bunch of us because we were like, we all just went hands on with it. Right. And it gives it gives games like that a, a a chance to to shine against these, you know, juggernauts. Juggernauts. And that's it's like that that I'll miss. You know, mm -hmm. I think that 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 going away I'll miss. That said, Nintendo has a really great platform in their directs for sort of like kit bashing a bunch of smaller games and being sure. like, we're doing a indie presentation, mm -hmm. you know, and pick a random day in June or May, and, yeah. and get get those stories what out. What's happening outside I don't know. the studio? <laughs> Something Somebody just of, fell over. Oh. Yeah, like lo loud banging happening yeah. above us. So. so, all right, let's. E three is still happening for now, maybe. Um, now on to games out this week. Um, the first game I want to talk about is Murder by Numbers. It's out on the fifth. Can't wait. Um, which is today. If you're listening to us now, um, it's. I'm not $15. going to wait. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Parachute you get it right it now. Right it's now? basically Phoenix Wright mixed with Picross. It's um, kind of visual novel-esque. And as you are discovering um, mysteries and uncovering things, you will look around with the scout computer and find a thing of interest and then solve a puzzle to get it. For example, you're looking around. It's like, I need a screwdriver. And then you solve a puzzle and then you find the screwdriver. And then you can, prevent these, you can present these things as evidence to characters in the room to try and uncover and solve things. Um, for example, so I've played a little bit of it. I like it a lot. Um, it's really, I got really engrossed with it and wanted to keep doing the puzzles because they're just a lot of fun to figure out. And the writing is pretty funny. And I think I could definitely recommend this game so far. Wait, it's not out yet. I forgot. It's the fourth. Yeah, it's the fourth. Oh, oh no. Yeah, it's out. To, it's sorry. Out. Yeah. If you're well, the, if for you're the listening, audience, it's out. Yeah. It is Thursday. I'm right. oh, sorry, Pear. Yes, it is Thursday right now. Oh, <laughs> no, um, I'm definitely getting that tomorrow. Yeah. Looks uh, awesome. Yeah, I like it a lot. If you like Picross or anything like that, and also visual novels, I think it's a fun, fun little game. Cool. Um, also out is Ebenob out on the fifth as well. Also fifteen dollars. And Pear, yeah, you've been playing it. Uh, yeah, it's really fun. Um, you know, it's been out on other platforms before, um, very positively received. Uh, when I showed um, Tom Marks that I was playing Ibn Ob, he said, ooh, brrr, <laughs> delightful. He loves that game. Uh, it's, a, it's a very kind of simple looking uh, two-player co-op game that I think is similar to how snipper clips feels when you're working together with somebody else. So, you know, two, you have to play this with two players. You split your, you use your, your Joy-Con to play it. And um, the way the world works is like there's, you, you can walk on top of the level or upside down underneath. And you have to constantly switch mm -hmm. between the two play characters. One has to boost the other one mm -hmm. to get up higher. Um, uh, you have to kind of split up and work together in order to clear the path. It's, the puzzles are really, really clever. Uh, it is really fun. Um, you know, I, I think it's a good game for parents to play with older kids. Like little kids, it, it gets a little complicated. You gotta pull off some, you know, you gotta jump up and boost somebody and like be pretty accurate in your jumps. Um, it's it's really good. I think you'll really dig it. Um, I will right. absolutely yeah. check that out. Yeah. And that was uh, even Ob, and the game we talked about before was Murder by Numbers. Trying yep. to repeat games for everyone. <laughs> That's a good call. Um, there's also uh, After Party out on the 6th for 20 bucks. Um, Jonathan Dornbush gave it an 8.5, which is great. And he says it's charming, hilarious, and insightful comedy that makes hell a pretty fun place to be. It's a point-and-click adventure game. I've been pretty stoked for this game to come to Switch. Uh, I love Night School. I love what they did in... Um, Oxenfree? Oxenfree. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, uh, this game is about uh, two people that die and they have to outdrink the devil <laughs> at a, in a drinking game to escape hell. And We've I all think been that, there. I think that it's is such a cool concept, D. and I very, heard it's very funny. And our friend Alana Pierce is in it, so mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to playing. Yeah, I think I'm gonna get. I haven't played it either. I've been. I was hoping you would come to Switch, so now I think I might mm -hmm. jump in and check it out and party with the devil. Sounds like a good time. Um, also out this week is uh, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team DX. I completely forgot this game's coming out. Yeah. Uh, 
I almost did too. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow. I, I completely forgot about this. Um, but but you you team uh, you team Mystery Dungeon as well, no, right? I team what? Don't you, you like love him? these games? I mean, I like them. I think they're fine. Oh, I don't who know. Was it? They, uh, there was like some diehard fan on uh, on the. Maybe Miranda said that. I remember Miranda saying that she. Well, did she say that she did play it or didn't play it? Oh, she. No. I don't. I don't know. I mean, I played them before. Um, I don't. To be totally honest, I never finished a Rescue Team okay. game. Yeah. I know. I. I like Pokemon fan. I. It was one of those games that I would put a ton of time in, and then eventually I would just. I don't know get bored mm -hmm. <laughs> but um mystery dungeon rescue team dx adds some quality of life improvements so getting through dungeons and grinding and finding pokemon that you want to add to your team mm -hmm. is so much easier and more streamlined so in the previous um pokemon mystery dungeon games like at least in this original one you could only have four pokemon in your party at a time right and if you wanted to recruit more pokemon you would have to have those slots empty on your team Mm -hmm. So in Rescue Team DX, you have eight slots of uh, Pokemon that you can pick up on your way. And you can also, there's also an auto mode that will just auto take you through the dungeon and then stop when you get to a battle and then you can fight. So it has a lot of improvements. Okay. Craig Harris gave the originals a 6.5. Just okay. Um, which is yeah. uh, which is okay. Okay, point five. Yeah, I think these improvements and the gr and the new graphics and everything would probably. Do we have anybody re-reviewing it for ID? I, Do we I don't know. Mm, it's a Dan joint. There's, yeah, there's no way to out. there's no way to find out. There's no way to know. Yeah. No it's way impossible to know. to know. We don't know, but we should if we are. We should have a review up on Friday, maybe. So <laughs> look out for that. We'll talk about it next week. Um, what is everyone playing? Ibanob. Ibanob. Yeah, really digging it. Mm-hmm. What about you, um, uh, still continuing my Smash journey, um, just incremental improvements. Okay. Tile says peace on. I think that means we only have two minutes left, so I'll go quick. No. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, I've been playing uh, Mega Man uh, Zero and ZX Collection. Uh, somehow I missed those games on the GBA, even as a Mega Man boy and a Mega Boy, as they're called. Mega Boy. And uh, man, those games kick ass. Those games are so cool. I've only played the first one so far, but it is awesome. How's it that, is hard as hell. How's that collection sort of like bells and whistles wise? Uh, like I've, the gallery is fine. Yeah, it's I, I it's not as... Uh, I've only looked at it for like two minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't seem as robust as some of the other collections, uh, like especially not like the Disney Afternoon collection right, and stuff like right, that. Right. Um, but man, that those those games seem super cool, and I'm really enjoying playing it. Uh, uh, really fun mechanics, really cool sort of like spin on the Mega Man formula, where you have the opportunity to to use a sword or a gun, um, so you can like shoot, 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 and then get in close and do some slicing, and then you can also equip. They're called elves, E L Fs. Um, that will give you different power ups and stuff. So like one elf that I equipped uh, shot. Um, shot at enemies like randomly on the screen or like give you a health boost or a, it's really cool it's an interesting take nice. i like it a lot brian what about you i jump back into hollow knight hey, oh, hey. i've been oh. thinking about doing that myself nice. and uh, i'm warming up to it yeah you come around to it or yeah. what yeah i think so nice um i restarted my save file because it was one of those things where i was like it's been too long i don't remember where i was mm -hmm. Um, it takes a while to get where i think it needs to get going but now i think it's starting to click um, and giving me that sort of Soulsborne feel I was looking for in, in a right. platformer. Um, yeah, that that's that's cool. about it. Cool. Um, I'm still playing Rune Factory 4. Mm -hmm. Special, of course. I you also knew. started playing Smite again. I don't oh, know. Oh yeah, I forgot Smite was so, even on yeah, Switch. I don't. Yeah. Sometimes I just feel like playing some Smite, and right. then I play it a couple of days for a week or two, and then I stop playing for a while. And it's just one of those games. It's easy to then pick up and play when I don't. When I want to play co-op with someone. I have to admit, I got sidetracked by playing Borderlands 3 with my kids. It was on sale, like, Best Buy had it for, like, 25 bucks. And so we bought three copies and played yeah. it on Xboxes. Nice. And absolutely loving it. And it just, I'm like, why is there not a Borderlands on the Switch? Yeah. It's just, you'd, you'd think that they'd bring, like, the Handsome Jack <sighs> collection or something. Yeah. Great co-op collection yeah. would mm -hmm. be, a co-op game would be great for a collection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and I am, I'm also playing Murder by Numbers. Right. So, but we'll talk about that more next week when everyone else has gotten a chance to play it. Sweet. Um, now on to question block. Um, following the three-year anniversary of the Nintendo Switch, I want to highlight this question from Jordan Van Horn. Uh, do you think that Nintendo used the majority of their best-selling IPs too quickly in the Switch lifecycle? Mm. No, that's how they got it going so fast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I, and honestly, like, yes, we have Mario and Zelda 
very early on, which I think is a good thing. That's how it should be, right? These are the reasons to own a Nintendo machine and Pokemon and all of that. And Mario um, Kart. Yeah. I, 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 no, I think that's good because it hopefully means that we get newer iterations. Let's not forget, like, Breath of the Wild also launched on the previous platform, so it wasn't wholly original for the system. Mm -hmm. It means that we get a new iteration. And when that happened before, like with Ocarina of Time um, and Majora's Mask, we got something really special. They're yeah. also, like, weeks away from launching what will be one of the best-selling video games of the year, hands down. Oh, yeah. Animal Crossing. Crossing. Yeah. I forgot to mention when we were talking about our top 25 that we will be updating that as new games come out instead yeah, of waiting. Yeah, new format. Instead so. of waiting for spring and fall updates, we're going to do them as new games. That's mm -hmm. cool. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, uh, to Paris' point, like, I think the idea of putting out a Mario, putting out a Zelda, uh, even something like a Yoshi early in uh, a life cycle of a console just gives me more hope that we'll get a second game in that series mm -hmm. towards the end of the life cycle, right? Mm -hmm. Like like your uh, Ocarina versus Majora's Mask comparison. Like I, I'd love to see a sequel to Mario Odyssey. I'd love to see a sequel to, uh, I'm still holding out for Mario Kart Ultimate, you yeah. know, something like yeah. that. So. Yeah, and it gives the games like Luigi's Mansion room to breathe too. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. you know, Luigi's Mansion was a launch game before and it just didn't do as well and it didn't get as many people to buy the console, mm -hmm. whereas like Mario obviously does early on. But then more people play Luigi's Mansion now because they have the console and... Yeah. yeah. Why know, not? You also have like the Pokemons that are guaranteed to sell millions annually. Pokemans. Yeah. Pokemans. Pokemans. Mm -hmm. We still haven't gotten a Metroid game either. So no. I think we know. still... We know. We know. that? <laughs> I think there's We are painfully plenty, aware, Casey. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Sucks there aren't a bunch of like classic, awesome, old Metroid games that they could just mm -hmm. put on there. Like... Like I don't know, like the Prime trilogy, trilogy, or what's, maybe like the. What's uh, that? No, I don't know. Never. Heard sorry. Of it. Uh, also, <laughs> if you follow the NVC Twitter account, I'm sorry for my mean goof that I did this morning. That was heartless. I apologize. Terrible. Zach hey, we confirmed. got we got verified. Yeah. Good job, Zach. Thanks. <laughs> um, this next question is from Brandon Pruitt, and he says, after seeing his work on Kid Icarus, I would love to see Masahiro Sakurai and his team tackle another quote dead series. Hmm. After a well-deserved break, of course. What series would you like to see him tackle? I know what Paris is going to say. Advance Wars. Oh, that's not hmm. what I thought you were going to say. Yeah. I thought you were going to say F-Zero. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That would be a nice one, right? Yeah. But he's also, like, I don't think he's actually... I mean, I, I don't know what the man can do, right? Like, it might be cool to see him branch out to other titles, but, mm -hmm. like, we haven't seen F-Zero, we haven't seen 1080, we haven't seen Wave Race, we haven't seen Mock Rider never came back, right? Ooh. Like, there are all these games he could jump on, but, like, I'm just... I would love to see an, an Advance Wars done as a step up in a next-gen mm -hmm. game. Yeah, so I was also going to say Advance Wars. Mm -hmm. so we, uh... I don't want to call Mario Kart a dead series, <laughs> but we haven't had a new Mario Kart game on consoles in like seven years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, Sakurai did Kirby's Air Ride, Hear Me Out. Mm -hmm. A really cool thing about that game is that it had a bunch of Smash Brothers style kind of meta challenges uh -huh. with yeah. the hammer and everything like that. And right. the cool open world mode. There, there's yeah. great stuff in that and game. And yeah. Mario Kart has slowly sort of started, you know, encompassing more franchises, mm -hmm. bringing in Splatoon and Animal Crossing and Zelda and stuff like that. And so I think bringing those things together and making like an everyone is here version of Mario Kart yeah. that had Ultimate. like a billion me meta challenges, season passes where you could mm -hmm. like unlock new characters and levels and stuff like that. Like I, I love that. Like that the idea of be him so being cool, like, yeah. oh, we're, we added uh, Simon Belmont and there's a Castlevania level now. <laughs> yeah, right? cool. Like but it would play to his strengths. It would open up the floodgates again for fans to be like, Put Ridley in a car, you know, all that right. stuff. But yeah. what about Diddy Kong Racing? It's an Ooh, abandoned I, franchise. I mean, yes. Very good. Cool racer with different vehicles. Not you a fan. You like that? You didn't like Diddy Kong I Racing? I like Diddy Kong Racing a lot. I it's know. like a cool Brian racer. Brian is making like diarrhea boss. face right now. Yeah. Why? Who would you rather have in Mario Kart, Link or a clock? Well, I already got Link. Or the I clock mean, how had am I going to tell time without a clock, Brian? The clock had a mustache. <laughs> Could anyone name the clock? No. Timmy Time? Clock. <laughs> huh. yeah, no one knows. I, don't, I haven't played that game since I was like, what, like nine? Yeah, because it's not that great. It's on. It's stuck Good. on the floor. I'll let this floor. episode with a little bit of salt. Throw it out. Yeah. Fine. More salt. You put so much salt this week. No, I didn't. What else did I say? Uh, what else did I salt? Something about EA. I don't know. That's Okay, EA has not put their games on Switch in any meaningful way. Okay. Salt. I think that's not salt. That's okay. reality. You're right. You're not wrong. That we is a fact. We can all agree that, that little dead true. space has never hurt anyone. That's true. Gosh. Sorry. That is about all the time. I was going to say Star Fox, actually. Okay. But oh. I know it's, I don't, I don't think it's like dead either, but we haven't yeah. gotten a new one. We haven't had one, one since really Star Fox Zero, and that was bad. 
Yeah. yeah. So I would like a new Star Fox game. That's good. I also might be the only people here, one of the only people here who actually like Star Fox Adventures, but... Yeah. Star- I like Star yeah. Fox Adventures. I thought yeah. that was cool. I like that game a lot, even though... It, yeah, Brian. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Brian's making, yeah. making Ooh, sneak face. I'll say anything. Look, in the end, okay. you should probably look at a HAL series, something like Play to His Strengths. Yeah, yeah. maybe yeah, so. Be, we anyway. can dream. <laughs> But that is about all the time we have left for NVC this week. If you want to write into us, you can follow us on the NVC podcast forums on Facebook, or you can write into us at NVC at IGN.com. Remember, you can always watch IGN, always watch NVC on IGN.com or YouTube or Spotify or any of your favorite podcasting platforms every Thursday at 3 p.m. PT. Remember, this is the only place you can get the thing. Get the thing. Get it.